Okay, so uh, the previous uh, the previous uh, lecture was talking about London. Now, let's proceed about New York. So the the whole uh, notion about New York is a bit more complex than London. Uh, even so, London is also co actually complex. You see, there's a there's a notion that we have uh, with with our researcher and our staffs back in the office in office of strategic architecture. You know, we spend so much time, weeks, sometimes months, just to find the correct method to, to infuse static city into a certain uh, case studies of, of cities. But once we got the grip on it, the answer is looks, looks very simple. But that's, that's the beauty of it. But we always thought that the best answer will always portray uh, the simplest way of thinking, like in the case of London, it was pretty much uh, straightforward. Uh, express line and uh, housing at the edge of the line. Very simple. Now, but in, in, we found out also that sometimes this simple simplicity cannot really be achieved in, in, other, in other cities. So the, everything is actually uh, 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 regarding to the uh, each of the cities that we we are talking about. So now about the New York, uh, uh, I want to start with an issue that is a bit more different. You know, a bit looks light at the beginning, but this issue will have a very fundamental uh, 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 thinking throughout our the development of our uh, proposal. Because to be frankly, New York was a completely different. Uh, it, it was uh, uh, understanding New York. It was a, a completely different task, different level of understanding. But the problem with New York, it's that it is like it is just too congested. Even after it has so many uh, a rail line, I mean, it's one of the oldest uh, uh, rail line uh, city. Uh, same same goes with London, but it's it's you know, uh, in a sense that the American culture, urban culture, is a bit different with the European urban culture. You know, the American are more freely in thinking, and then uh, again, if we are tracing this back to the studies that we've done in in particularly in in this uh, section, the urban studies to urban architecture, we can trace this back all the way to the, not only to Frank Lloyd Wright's uh, Broadacre Cities uh, theory, but also before that to Ebenezer Howard's uh, Garden City, which and then both uh, 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 is gentrificating uh, uh, the suburbia sprawl. And then again, also like the examples, the difference between Paris and LA that we have been talking about. So, but again, uh, New York is U.S. It's it's portraying the whole idea of U.S., where it is more or less uh, about a, even with the condition of force use of MRT, which many people utilize that, but it is also equally a lot, uh, equally main, uh, equally some people, some of the people, are using the public, uh, the private uh, vehicles, to 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 commute. So we are talking about double impacts right now, the congestion on the on the uh, level of MRT, but also to the congestion uh, on the level of the uh, private cars use. We threw throughout all these uh, 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 New York's condition. So, so again, it's it's a bit different. So and and then through this uh, uh, through the search, we have faced uh, some failure uh, or, or, or throughout the research. But and then, actually, we start to get the hang of New York when we we are uh, when when we were in in, in this uh, uh, when we were uh, observing uh, something different. Got nothing, almost no. It's it's just like specific projects, 
and it was not really it was not really well it's an urban uh, rejuvenile redevelopment kind of project but it was not really you know the kind of the, th the thing that you that you will think of it's not like about high-rise building uh, malls big malls and everything no it is it was nothing of the kind and it actually it was at that time that we start to realize that we might need to be a little bit more creative okay so and then because of that i will start this uh, session of explaining new york with something that is a bit different the current issue of the bridges in the sky and we uh, we will actually start not from new york but we will start from seoul uh, Xiong Ye Xion. I, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm uh, pronouncing it right, but you, you know what I mean. Okay, so uh, uh, Xiong Ye Xion is a 10.9 kilometers long, 6.8 mi miles approximately, modern public recreation space in downtown Seoul. Uh, the massive urban renewal project is on the side of a stream that flowed before the rapid post-war economic development caused it to be covered by transportation infrastructure, uh, a highway to be precise. So the 900 million US dollars project initially attracted much public criticism, but opening in 2005 has become popular residents and tourists. So as you can see, I was highlighting the 900 million US dollars project. Okay, so the Xiong Yong, wait, Xiong Ye Xion uh, location at the earlier a, uh, days was this location. Now, to be specific, we were talking about this uh, above ground uh, elevated highway, where this elevated highway underneath the elevated highway there goes with the uh, city river uh, canal the, the canal man-made man canal river so this is this is what it looks then this is what it looks now so basically the well this is a infamous project so basically what they did was they tear down they were tearing down the highway that was used to be above this river and redevelop the river itself so and then what was what used to be a highway park park now become a city park you know people cross and so on and so on. this is some some of the very uh, well-known spots but you, you cannot really swim in there but but still it is a, a it's a public oasa in, inside of the soul during night time uh, good lighting beautiful waterfall dancing fountains uh, rainbow waterfall now that that was a uh, soul now this is the place where we actually found we had that eureka moment about new york it's a high line in new york so the high line also known as a high line park is a 1.45 mile long approximately 2.33 kilometers linear park so it's a linear park created on elevated section of a district new york central railroad spar called the west side line a in uh, inspired by the three mile long promenade plate uh, uh, tree like line walkway a, a similar project in Paris completed in 1993 but it is smaller but it's it's a similar the line has been redesigned and planted as an aerial greenway and rails to trails path the High Line Park is built on the disused southern portion of the west side line so so it just just to to give an idea this is the uh offer uh, this is the elevated mrt line the west line side line which is not used anymore so but if if you want to use it there are actually a lot of pe popular 
popular uh, culture that is uh, that's been uh, taken at this side of, of New York and maybe if I'm not mistaken some of them is taken in the uh, uh, second Spider-Man movie where, where, where the Spider-Man is uh, uh, having this battle with, with octopus it was at, on that kind of scene the west side line uh, of, uh, but it's, it's, it's not used anymore so it's running to the lower west side of Manhattan and it runs to Gusford Street three blocks below 14th Street uh, in the uh, Meatpacking District through Chelsea to the northern edge of the West Side Yard on the 34th Street near the Chavez Convention Center. Formerly, the West Side li Line went as far south as railroad terminal at the Spring Street, just north of Canal Street. However, most of the southern section was demolished in 1960, with another small patient portion being demolished in 1991. Uh, repurposing the railway into an urban park began in 2006, with the first phase opening in 2009, so just five years after the reopening of, of the uh, Xiu Yong Yun in Xiu, uh, and the second phase opening in 2011. The third and final phase officially opened to the public on September 21st, 2004. A short stop above 10th Avenue uh, and 30th Street is still unopened as of September 2014, but uh, will be opened by 2017. Once the Hudson Yards uh, redevelopment project is complete, so it also going along with the Hudson Yard redevelopment projects. There are some some of the key projects is including the uh, the the creation of these uh, uh, creative hubs, a new creative hubs, a big one uh, for 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 rejuvenation of uh, eastern part Houston uh, Hudson River part of uh, New York. Uh, the project has several uh, real estate development in the neighborhoods that lie along the line and increase real estate values and price along the route, of course, and the result of a halo effect. So the new new term, the halo effect for for cities that is that is uh, uh, good for tourism. As of September 2014, the park gets nearly five million visitors annually. This small, we're talking about a small park but it's a long part. So it's almost like the scenario that we have for the uh, uh, London habitat, habitation housing. So it's a long period. So anyway, you can see this one. So this is where it is developed. We have the Hudson River in here. This is what it looks then uh, many years ago elevated uh, 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 railroad this is what it looks just few years back uh, a decade back so this is above the ground elevated region and this is what it looks now so this is the same rail line as this one looking from underneath now if you go up here you will find this so this is a, a massive linear park so that provides uh, the New Yorkers with a new kind of activity. So now the New Yorkers can have uh, many places to sunbath. It's above the, the, the high line. And in some places, uh, the, the, uh, the shrub actually goes pretty good. Again, this is some uh, maybe two stories high so the the this one is two stories above the ground level the street is underneath this and then where there's even the promenade so this is actually the place where we found the eureka uh, eureka moment where we were when we were like sitting on this bench and looking over the street down down uh, underneath and then this is what it looks like from the street. So that's the high line that's going across the uh, eastern part of New York. Now, let's go back a little bit to Seoul. The Seoul 7017 project. Very sorry. A Sulo 
the, is the Korean name for Sky Garden, translates towards Seoul or, or, and Seoul Street. Uh, 1717 marks the overpass construction year from 1970 to its new function of public work with uh, 2017. So, 70 and 17. Uh, the pedestrian nice uh, viaduct uh, uh, next to Seoul's main uh, uh, station is the next step towards making the city and especially central station district greener, friendlier, and more attractive, uh, uh, whilst connecting all patches of green in the uh, wider uh, area. In central Seoul, a true plan village has been realized in form a former near inner city highway in an ever-changing urban area accommodating the biggest variety of co uh, Korean plant species and transforming it into a public uh, 983 meters long park gathering 50 families of plants including trees, shrubs and flowers displayed in 645 tree pots so it's, it's, it's massive uh, collecting around 228 species and subspecies. In total, the park will include 24,000 plants, trees, shrubs, and flowers that are newly planted, many of which will grow to their final heights in the next decade. Since the project was won by MVRDV, uh, the, the Dutch company, uh, in May 2015, the main challenge of the Sky Garden has been to transform the existing overpass into a public garden, overlaying a matrix of Korean flora into the 16-meter elevated steel and concrete structure. So it's above that. How to transform a 1970s highway into a Sky Garden, garden and how to change the daily life of thousands of people who cross Seoul city center every day. From the start, MVRDV engaged with this need to change the forgotten and existing infrastructure into a green symbol that will become a catalyst for a greener quarter of Seoul. Together with the municipality, local NGOs, landscape teams, and city advisors are committed to accommodating the biggest diversity of flora into a strictly urban condition. New bridges and stairs connect the fire duct with hotels, shops, and gardens. Okay, so this is the sky garden in Seoul. As you can see, it's, it's quite long. It's almost like the, uh, almost like the uh, high line, if you may see. Now, this is what it looks from far away. This is what it looks closer. And this is what it looks in, in, in a more human perspective. This is what it looks at night. A very uh, romantic type of, of uh, uh, use, uh, uh, romantic use of uh, lads. Lightings, okay. So, but and then, in this case, uh, the three cases we are talking about condition. With the assumption when you do not really have a traffic congestion anymore, because that's, that's the main bottom line notes for that. Now, the New York High Line is rejuvenation, rejuvenation, the uh, the redevelopment of a unused infrastructure. Uh, same with, with this one. Now, but you see, that's, that's, the, that's the beauty of this. The thing is that we were thinking the other way around. What do I mean by the other way around? You see, right now, New York is still very much uh, having the congestion problem going in and out of the city or even just inside the city. So, the question was, uh, the High Line back then, before, before it becomes a High Line, it was serving as a, uh, a transportation infrastructure. 
Now we need to, to have more infrastructure on transportation in order to avoid this kind of congestion. So we need to build a more uh, uh, transportation means. Again, uh, the first phase of static city is the phase of a, a, a stratification of mobility. Stratification that is achieved by multiplying, enhancing mobility. Okay, so how so how do we do that? So we were thinking, what if we actually building a more high line, but it's not for a park use, but it's just for a transportational use, just like it, how it used to be used uh, uh, back in the old days. But this time, because of it has. Uh, it has already uh, it surpassed the MRT condition where MRT is already going flow in and out of uh, uh, New York fastly. We can use it for private car use. Okay, so, but that's the key. The key is to make a connection, even if we're creating a new networks of private car uh, elevated uh, uh, highway or bridge or whatever, bridge in the skies, it has to be uh, using the the, the uh, uh, specific uh, interaction connection with the MRT condition, existing MRT condition of New York. Hence, that's that's the first measures that we need we need to do. So, uh, of course, this is uh, New York, and this is Manhattan. Let's let's go to this analysis. Uh, one of the way, uh, one of the way of of uh, creating less uh, congestion in New York is by this is one of the proposed bill is to create a state commission to set out a develop a solution to the severe traffic congestion problem in New York City Central Business District has proposed a zone in which motorists uh, would be charged a daily free to daily fee to enter here as some condition now so this this graph is actually showing us several several things the first thing the most important thing is that the CBD is claimed to be at this side uh, 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 60th Street downward downbound so southbound uh, down to the uh, lower Manhattan so this is lower Manhattan upper Manhattan so and then this is where the most congestion happen okay so and then because this is a central business district there is not much things that we can do here now it's a different case with London why because we were just create attempting to propose to attempting to create express railroads that is just going from the tipping point, one tipping point to the other tipping point. But this kind of thing will not work in in the kind of congestion of that we have in New York. So the thing is that we need to create a kind of gateway, but we, we need to be spe more specific. Okay, from New York, we are being more specific to Manhattan. And then from Manhattan, we in the business district ways, we are being specific to only in the lower Manhattan. But because this is already a business district, congested business district, the idea is to move a little to the north, where you have less less uh, less less condition. Why? Because you cannot really build of uh, these this, this business district. So this is a kind of economical restrictions. So, again. This is the state of New York. This is the Manhattan. This is the Manhattan. Okay, and then taking reference to the uh, MRT. Okay, this is the MRT that is serving New York as a state, and this is the MRT that is serving the area that will be. Uh, uh, taking our focus on, which is the middle to the upper uh, side of Manhattan, because we are trying to avoiding the business district. Okay, the idea is to create uh, a contraflow 
uh, on the upper side of, of Manhattan, uh, uh, on the mid upper side of the lower Manhattan, uh, so that all the f because all the flows that's going from Manhattan, as you can see here, there are only uh, you know, they are already uh, a kind of congested condition in here. So the idea is to actually push the people up to the upper ways. That's, that's the idea why we are uh, 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 taking the focus on, on this uh, middle to upper kind of Manhattan. So that's, that's the first idea. The, so the first idea is actually to avoid lower Manhattan with the uh, basic, uh, uh, the base southern tip is happening on this 42nd street where we have uh, one of the uh, busiest street with uh, one of the most uh, uh, transport hubs in, 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 in uh, New York. Now the upper part is somewhere after the, uh, 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 before the Columbia University or uh, after, in, in the area of Columbia University. Why? Because and then we are what we are proposing is to create densification. So don't forget the densification. We are creating stratification by enhancing trans uh, uh, mobility, but we are also going to create densification. And it is uh, quite worthless to do densification in the area of the Upper Manhattan, which is not so congested uh, at all. Although this this condition habitation can always be developed further north or even to the uh, uh, the, to the uh, respective bound, bounds of the rivers. Anyway, so throughout that, that map that we've been showing, uh, we are calculating this whole uh, scenarios of uh, MRT hubs, almost like London, but this time we are calculating the intersection hubs and, and so on and so forth. We, we, we cannot really portray the whole thing in, in, in a circular map kind of diagram because it's, a, it's a much more complex than that. So anyway, this is the kind, just to give you an idea, this is the kind of analysis that we did. Like for instance, the 100 and so this is the street. As you know, the, uh, the Manhattan is built over this uh, direct grid system horizontal for the street and uh, vertical uh, for the avenue. So just for example, I will show you how to read this graph, uh, this, this table. We have the 125th street and we have the intersection with the 8th avenue and in the, uh, the 7th avenue, the Malcolm uh, X avenue or the 6th avenue, the 5th avenue and so on and so forth. And then when, say for, insta for instance, when the 125th Street meets with, uh, meet with uh, Malcolm X Avenue, there is a one, uh, uh, one station, which is what 125 uh, over 6th Avenue, that is serving one, two, three, four, five different hubs, uh, different lines. So this is a hubs of five lines. So you see, it's very different to the London's, London thing. It's much more complex. So, say, so for instance, this one creating, uh, this, this one is serving seven line, this one five line, this one five, uh, three lines, this is zero. So the way that we're tabulating the data is not by specific uh, uh, use of, of, uh, of hubs or stations, but by specific intersection between the uh, intersection between the uh, streets and avenue. So we are calculating more or less 155 intersection of the hubs uh, of the lines that is happening uh, within the uh, uh, range of this uh, MRT system. Okay. So from that, the data can be uh, 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 can be summarized into this existing MRT network. Okay. 
uh, we are using this data to create a, a table of uh, priorities for for the for the construction that we will, uh, I, I will I will uh, implore more discuss more over this. So anyway, but again, also the MRT network, again because this is a U.S. city, we also need to be accompanied with the studies of the existing street uh, uh, street networks. We're talking about the the car car based uh, networks. So also using you see this whole uh, notion is showing the so from from here we have decided the use of uh, prioritize uh, streets because the streets are going from say from 125 the fifth street to a uh, 14th street there are so many streets right now but through the use of this MRT network analysis we are creating a priority list so this is the priority list 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 streets and one, two, three, four, five, six uh, avenues. Now, from this priority list, we are taking this to the existing street uh, analysis of the width. As you as you know, all the streets there are that are in New York, they only have two class of different streets. The street that is a hundred feet uh, difference, block to block. Uh, uh, no. Uh, yeah, block to block means the edge to uh, wall to wall of the block, and the 60 feet uh, width. So we have the 100 feet width and the 60 feet width, and that's just about it. So, and then this diagram is showing all of those uh, prioritized streets in terms of their uh, class of, of of the street. Okay. Next, so this is the map that we've been talking about. Uh, again, New York State, Manhattan. This is the our uh, uh, focus point. Okay, so and then this is what we call the static peripheries. Uh, if it's in London case, the static peripheries is the uh, uh, ring to. Uh, off a ground line. So we have the through all that uh, different analysis that we've just been discussing, we have decided to create these static peripheries in this condition. So we have the 11th Avenue, we have the uh, Frank Dersofel Drive, and then we have the E the uh, 125th Street and 14th Street as the base uh, 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 site of the static city peripheries. Now we also, but also we include two bypass as the beginning of, of this whole static city. A, the B is the 8th Avenue and the C is the 5th Avenue as the busiest uh, avenue that is going on the uh, uh, left side and right side of the Central Park. Okay, so this is now our static city domain. Now, the typical cross section, we have the a class one is a 100 feet block. So as you can see, 100 feet block means 100 feet from the edge of the wall to the other wall. And it's always have the same measurement of 25 feet pedestrian and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 50 feet of uh, street and another 25 feet of pedestrian. So it's the same. Now this is the class 2, the 60 feet block street <coughs> which compromise of 10 feet pedestrian, 40 feet road and another 10 feet pedestrian. And then the last one is the class three, which is on the peripheries, uh, the the Hudson or East Re River peripheries. At this at this stage, uh, the example is the uh, Hudson River peripheries, with 
where this one may vary the 40 feet uh, uh, condition uh, bound to this to the to the river but this one is more or less the same anyway so we, we have a class 3 3 existing class 3 3 okay so this is the static city condition now because we are talking about project that is so complex we are we cannot really just do them in one two three four uh, phases we have to do this in, in several more phases but of course uh, I have to make notes before we beginning to discuss we begin to discussing the phases the phases that we are talking about is compromise of the condition of change it doesn't really compromise of certain value of time you know it's for every year every two years uh, every three years so on and so forth so the years can be de determined later if it's uh, uh, if it's if the condition is is already decided to be uh, to, uh, to to be developed furthermore, okay. So anyway, this is the first phase. The first phase, this one phase, it's compromise of creating of elevated road, elevated. This is a bridge in the sky, right? Elevated road. Uh, uh, there is intersecting the following streets okay a river avenue eighth avenue fifth avenue uh, 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 frank de Roosevelt avenue 125th street and 4th, 14th street sorry class elevation is a, a, a elevation ground primary on the primary street a hundred feet street okay Okay, now what do we do after that? We are, the, the phase 2A is the creation of even more A networks of this uh, 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 elevated street. So now we have Lexington Avenue, uh, 96th Street, 70 to 70, uh, 72nd Street, uh, 50th Street and 34th Street. Elevation, elevated, and primary. There's one the secondary. I will explain that secondary later. So secondary is basically the the 60 feet block. So, in the chart, it will looks like this: phase 2A diagram, and then phase 2B diagram, and so on and so forth. So, but what does this mean? So I will show you what this means, okay? This is a condition of class one, meaning a primary uh, class. This is existing, typical cross-section. And then we just simply create a elevated street. This to this, all right? That's the first proposal for creating this a uh, stratification uh, phase of static city to, to enhance mobility. Because why? Because New York is so congested. Phase 3A, even more phase 3B with all the data. Okay, now uh, uh, this is the second elevation, second class. So second class is happening on the 60 feet block from here to elevated street. Okay, until the final one, it after the 3B phase, phase one to A to B, 3A, 3B it will end at this New York complete network stratification and habitat densification phase okay I was just being being uh, explain I just explain all of the uh, uh, stratific uh, uh, stratification all of the networks that but where is the habitat now the habitat is shown on this highlighted edge can you see the bold edge here? 
this is highlighted age. So if we go a little further, little back, okay, here there is no habitat. Here this is the first habitation to be built. And then this one is the second one. Okay. The third one and the fourth one. Notice that there are some exceptions that is happening. These are most likely the exception of or, or constraint of the location. Uh, this one, in this location, we have the uh, United Nations complex, so there's no way we're going to build on that area, but also Rockefeller complex. Uh, and then on this uh, eastern bound, uh, on the western bound, we have the uh, Hudson docks, so also impossible to be built. So anyway, but uh, just, just for the reference, this uh, habitation might also be uh, developed furthermore on uh, upwards uh, towards the uh, uh, upper Manhattan location, but also it's able to be developed in mirror to the river. So because we have the Hudson River here, we can build the same one on the New Orleans side of the river, or in this one is uh, uh, on the other side of East River. Okay, so but that's, that's basically the idea. Now the housing that we are proposing is again a bit different to the New York, uh, to the London's proposals, for instance this. So the housing is using the standard that's been used by the ADAPT New York uh, uh, competition. We've just been discussing the ADAPT New York on the uh, last part, uh, last sec uh, uh, second part of the uh, uh, third season uh, uh, lecture. So, using that specific number, uh, 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 using that specific uh, uh, standard of measurement, uh, we designed this house. For instance, this is the startup house. Again, we have also the startup and the family house types, like in London. Uh, people are entering from this courtyard. And then we have this uh, 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 cook, cook, uh, kitchen area. And this is a studio type, so there's the uh, bedroom and this is the toilet. And with inner courtyard inside here. Okay. And then from there we have the family room. Again, also the same arrangement with a foldable uh, 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 a foldable retractable wall. So if the retractable wall is, is enclosed, then it becomes a private room. But uh, more or less the same. Uh, common area, it's quite wide common area, and then two bedroom and two bathroom. Now, same question with London. Where do we put this uh, housing? Okay. Or, uh, hold on, the isometric plan, like this, and like this. And although this is uh, the entrance is from underneath, but uh, same method with London, we have the public going above that. Now, where do we put them? So, of course, we've been saying about about the the uh, edge of the river locations. But what is the logic behind that? No. Now, I will go move a little bit away further to the story of these projects, the Big U projects by Big yeah, by Big, the Big Angels Group. So it's a recently uh, 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 recently developed projects, ongoing projects. They just won this uh, last year or the year before, some something like that. So, but basically, this is the uh, resiliency projects to create these uh, buffer zones on this area of Manhattan. Because this, of course, has something to do with the. Uh, flooding of New York that is happening in uh, 2014 or 2015, some, something like, or 2013, high tide 
uh, uh, New York, thing, where water is coming in, and what makes it worse, it was the very tipping point of Southern Bound, is which is the actually the central business district of New York that is actually most vulnerable to this uh, 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 water flooding. So the idea is to create this buffer zone all along this uh, river bound by creating this kind of uh, public amenities uh, so that even if the water is tidying up, the city is safe. All right. So a buffer, buffer wall. Okay. So hence the next question is that of course that is the southern bound, this uh, lower Manhattan part. It's a central business district. It is a viable location for this kind of a uh, development. You know, uh, high level of, uh, uh, of parks and so on and so forth. Now our proposal was that. This is specifically on the eastern and western part of Manhattan, Manhattan, and in in respect to the uh, uh, specifically to the Hudson River and the Eastern River uh, uh, edge of the of the city. <coughs> Instead of building just park, why don't we just utilize it and build the housing? So we are building an extension. That's for sure. And then we, we also need to build the high tide uh, wall. But, and then we can also build on the street level the housing that was being proposed. So hence, we have all of our uh, 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 habitat proposal is in the eastern and western edge of the lower Manhattan through the uh, uh, Friend of uh, uh, Drive, also to the River Drive. Okay, so the whole thing in 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 uh, the first and second phase uh, in the map can be seen like this. So the 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 black uh, this this the, the thin lines representing the uh, the line for the stratification uh, elevated uh, street proposal, while the uh, thick lines is representing the uh, habitat proposal on, on the river banks. Okay, so now as you can see, people can move freely, and then each of this intersection is already. Uh, remember that this has already been analyzed. That each of this intersection, they, all of them, they have a uh, each of the street, yeah, I mean, they have the hubs for transportation, the MRT hubs. So this whole thing has been created in a such that uh, it is actually uh, compromising the blueprint of the intersection hubs of all of the MRT line that is uh, serving uh, 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 underground below this network. So, but again, we also going for the post bubble scenario, a post Kyoto kind of scenario, but with a, a way different approach to London's uh, proposal. So in London's proposal, we have simply proposing the uh, occup occupation, uh, uh, occupying of uh, the streets uh, within the uh, express railway networks and making it into greeneries and green belts because it's not serving any more any more uh, 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 mobility now in in response to this unique uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, New York American uh, uh, way of life we are proposing something a bit different now this is a personal rapid transit it's well, personal rapid transit has been uh, on the market quite a long time. Uh, we we did uh, participate in the uh, uh, tender of 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 designing the personal rapid transit, some of the personal rapid transit 
uh, 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 hubs in Rome on 2009, so it was a long time ago, but we do not understand why personal rapid transit is not really developing well throughout the years, even eight years later up to now. We, we haven't really heard about this uh, boom of personal rapid transit. We encounter this kind of projects again on the, on the Surya University master plan projects, but again, this whole thing is just evaporated. But anyway, there are certain advantages of the use, uh, to the use of personal rapid transit. First, it is, a, a, it is by demand system, so you can use like apps and then it will come by itself. Of course, it's using, it is using a, a, a tracks, but because personal rapid transit are lights, the tracks are quiet lights and quiet, actually quiet uh, economical to 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 be used uh, to to be constructed because it's it's even less uh, uh, e even it contain con say uh, less weight than a light rail, so we are we are moving from the mass rapid transit to the light rail to the PRT use. So of course this is personal rapid, so it can only it can only be. Uh, uh, serving like uh, usually the common types four person to six persons per unit, but uh, again because of it's the, it's a it's a more low investment kind of uh, infrastructure, you can actually develop it over time in, in a much easier way rather than uh, the using the light rapid transit or mass rapid transit, but. The main advantage that the PRT has that the others do not do is that by demand and the system use that it uses. Uh, this is very American because when you do an MRT, then you have to go to definite kind of 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 uh, a line. As you can see, our proposed networks is already uh, gentrifying webs of networks. Now, these kind of networks will be very useful for the, the, the likes of M, uh, PRT to go here and there. This one, because it's a, a repetence. So anyway, uh, it is more into the custom of the 20th century American dreams where they will have the freedom to go from the one location to another location a much more f in much more freer way than if they are uh, to, to use uh, MRT or LRT. So here, uh, the only need small spaces, but we are talking about elevated spaces now. And then this is the, the inner side of the PRT. Four people, you, a common one is the four people uh, 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 M, uh, PRT, and then even the station is a small one like this. This is a station for one PRT, this is two PRT stations, or even the larger one is still small, like this one. All right? Now, uh, almost the same with the London scenes, is that we also gentrify the post-Kyoto, post-bubble uh, uh, phase, the third phase of static city, by utilizing the exactly the same infrastructure. So we are talking about the, the elevated street infrastructure. As you can see, now, the difference is that we have what we call a sub-secondary. Sub-class means substitute. Now, I will explain this. Okay, for example, I just give one example. Okay, the uh, uh, the post Kyoto phases have uh, the post bubble phases happening when uh, assuming that uh, the citizen of New York is already reaching the tipping point of development of New York, meaning that because we we have been like. Uh, uh, enhancing their their uh, uh, transportation capa capacity of the city by creating all of these different uh, elevated streets, right? They are, are come to up and then while at the same time we are creating the houses on the each eastern and western end of the uh, Manhattan, and then 
people are starting to moving in into Manhattan to live in Manhattan they do not really go out anymore no commuting anymore so it will create less uh, uh, less transportation so it become it become worthless to you to have a car if you already live inside the inside Manhattan and that's the first point uh, the second point is that when you have less car of, uh, 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 circulating in the city that's when you have a post bubble condition and then when you have a post bubble condition and then you meanings that with the gentrification for example the x1 here of each of one line one street say this is happening on the 96th street it means that you can liberate the 95th and 94th street why? Because like it's in New York, the whole thing is in blocks, right? If you have doubled the transportation in 66th Street, the 65th Street and 64th Street on on each side of the uh, of the 60 uh, uh, 66th Street. Uh, sorry, let, let me let uh, let me rearrange my words. When you have the 66th Street, it's doubled in capacities already then you don't need to use the 65th street which is on the lower side of the Manhattan and the 67th street so you don't need to use both street and then you can just diminish the street and create parks out of two streets because your transportation needs is already been uh, uh, already been utilized by the 66th street so this whole thing is happening at the city level we can do that except of course the avenue because there are very limited uh, 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 avenues available okay that's the second note the third note is that the dots the dots are representing the PRT hubs so we are installing the PRT above ground above the elevation uh, elevated uh, on the elevated uh, condition and then we are putting the hubs on this intersection which already again the, each of the intersections is already been analyzed since the beginning as the intersections of different hubs of the MRT system so you have MRT in the underground level you have the road networks enhanced road network on the street level and then you have the PRT on the elevated uh, 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 level okay so hence these are all the data for optimization location so phase 4 uh, continuing the phase 3 a b now we have the phase 4 this one and then phase 5 a is this one okay and then phase 5 b is this one and then phase 6A even more and then the last one phase 6B and this is the total chart okay so you can see there are so many roads that actually can be freed from this this kind of gentrification uh, of 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 uh, of uh, uh, the optimization of 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 the transport so uh, these are the uh, explanations of each of the phases now this is the location of substitutes and optimizer so each that is ap ap appearing in this diagram and then the dots again are representing the uh, 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 the station for the PRT including the, the uh, including the uh, gray one now if we put all them together into the map we will have this map okay so this dots representing all the transport hubs at uh, the uh, 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 station for PRT above ground uh, uh, elevated 
and each of the plus representing the uh, street that might be liberated and be created as a as a, a new uh, uh, greeneries. Okay. Now, what will it looks like on the section? Okay. So this is the phase one to three. So remember, we have first we have this class one, 100 feet block, and then we put, we create this, uh, 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 we create this uh, elevated street to enhance the, uh, the uh, network, transportation networks. Now once it reaches the tipping point where people already living on the east and west part of Manhattan, we do not, we do not, we do not need uh, any, uh, any equal sum of this uh, 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 mobility, then we transform this into High Line with a PRT in the middle. So that's the street, that's the high line, and this is the PRT in the middle. Okay. Same thing with the scenario for uh, 60, 60 block, uh, 60 feet block street, the class two. Same thing. See, we can go down above the housing and go to the uh, 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 to the riverside. PRT. So, uh, as you can see, uh, the, this whole notion of the static city New York is actually uh, uh, developed in a manner where it, it's really trying to understand the culture of the, uh, 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 of the citizen of New York. So not only it's taking account of this kind of highline projects very, very uh, seriously, the idea is then you can create these whole networks of transport that at the very beginning of the states, you use the network of, of, of elevated streets just as streets, but you can always have a condition, a potential when these uh, transportation schemes is already reaching its maximum point, then you can imagine the whole networks that we've been creating, it can be turned into a massive networks of high line. And then, we, and then at this scale, the high lines that we are talking about will not be just of a green kind of halo effect, but it will really becoming a, a kind of a jungle on the sky. So instead of bridges in the sky, and then we will have the jungle in the sky for the city of uh, New York and uh, uh, Manhattan. Okay, that's all. Okay. Thank you.